Hi, this is Isabel Florence and you are listening to You Are Light Podcast, a safe space where we talk about mental health and well-being. Hi, how are you? Thank you for joining me again. I've got to say, I've been receiving some lovely messages of people who have been listening every week and it just fills my heart with joy and light. So I want to thank you for being here. It means a lot to me. I don't underestimate the preciousness of your time. So thank you. So today we're going to talk about detachment again. This is the third episode on detachment. And I'm pretty sure I'm going to come back to this subject again in the future because there is so much to talk about. But this time we're going to talk about detachment from outcomes and from our own identity. We have all as a society gone through something very life-changing, which was the pandemic. And something that became very clear to me after a while was how attached I was to my identity, to how people saw me, to the work that I did. And it made me realize that by attaching myself to those labels, I had therefore started attaching my happiness and my sense of worth to those labels. It's important for us to understand, like we spoke about in the first episode of Detachment, that as a human being, we are already complete and enough. Again, it's going back to the same message. So you don't need your job, a specific lifestyle. You don't need your intelligence and the books that you read. You don't need your ideals, what you look like, to define who you are. So detaching ourselves from the identities we have created, I think can be very healthy. Because this attachment keeps us stagnant and very fearful of change. If you believe that without your job, you're not yourself anymore, there is a fear of losing that job that's going to haunt you. You were a free person before you created all these attachments. You were already complete as a child. As a kid, we're constantly asked, what is it that you want to do when you grow up? As if that was the most important thing that we should understand as a human being. As if that is the thing that will define us. But it's not. There's so much more. Life is very much a lesson of unlearning things rather than learning them. And if you continue attached, you are not open for others to change your mind, to change the idea of who you are. If you're attached to your intelligence and the ideals and values that you follow in your life, you will never listen to someone's opinion because deep down you will know you're not ready to change your own. So this detachment to our mindset and our ideals and our values also allows us to be more compassionate when we challenge our identity, we allow ourselves to change. And that's a wonderful exercise to try new things and remind ourselves of the ability of change. It's one of the most incredible things the human being is able to do. Another attachment that we can have is to our identity when it comes to the people around us. For example, within our family. So we all do this and I've done this as well. We create a story of who we are within the family dynamic. But by living detached, you accept the fact that you are changeable, that you are not locked into this identity that you have created within your family and that the way your father or mother or sisters or brothers, uncles, have treated you, do not define who you are. Sometimes we attach to victimhood. It's easier to believe we do not hold the responsibility for our happiness. It's easier to say, 
I was treated this way, so therefore I cannot be the person I want to be. So yes, detachment can be really scary. There is safety in attaching to a specific identity. It's what we know, right? It's within the family. It's the familiar. And then we go into the world and we recreate these dynamics again and again and again. We attach ourselves to this victimhood. We believe that that's who we are. And therefore, we recreate this dynamic around us. And then again, we become the victim. Now I can't be happy. I can't be the person I want to be. Because my partner is treating me the way that he is. So it's important to look in sometimes and think, am I creating this storyline? Am I creating this identity within my family? It's really difficult to look into this. But I think very important. You place the responsibility of happiness back to yourself. Another thing we do is attach our happiness to outcomes in the future. When I get this, I'll be happy. When I achieve that, when I have that. This is the perfect recipe for permanent disappointment. It means that the present will never be good enough if you keep dreaming of a better future. Our best days are not yet to come. They're right here in the now. You are doing yourself a disservice if you place your joy in the future when there can be joy right now. There's so many stories of people having near-death experiences and suddenly understanding the fleeting nature of life and therefore understanding that joy can only be lived in the present moment. And you see these stories of these people changing their lives completely, leaving their job, moving a country, reconnecting to someone they have been in a bad place for years because they understand that if we place things in the future, if we place our joy in the future, we might never get it. The joy is in the present. So how do we find this joy in the present? We find it in the body. This is where your subconscious mind connects to you. And this is where your soul connects to you. It's through your body. So we meditate. We focus on our breathing. I think we all know one person who has huge expectations. The person who books everything in advance and is very meticulous about what, for example, a social gathering should be like. I've been that person sometimes. Sometimes I have decided to create an image in my head of what something should become in the future without realizing that I have absolutely no control over that picture. And if I do have any control, it is an unconscious control, an instinctual control. From my own experience and from observing people around me, I have realized that having expectations can be very detrimental. And arriving into a situation, any new situation, or even a situation that has happened over and over again, even going back to the same office, even going back to working in the same place with the same people, Arriving there with a fresh mindset and with an open mindset to new beginnings and to new experiences is so much more exciting than having expectations. When we expect a certain future, we close down and we don't see the new things that might be surrounding us. So if you take the same route to work every day or to school every day. And it gets to a point where you don't even realize you're in this journey anymore. Because you make the same journey every day, you turn off your brain when that is happening. 
when you were making this journey, it's very easy to expect the same experience and allow ourselves to get away from the present moment because we have experienced it so many times. I think life is very precious. So staying present in every moment and not losing every moment, I think it's really important. Maybe when you went into that coffee shop that you go every morning, the person next to you was struggling. And if you had been in the present moment, you could have looked at them and given them a smile. And that could have changed their day. Maybe on your walk to the gym, if you were present, you would have realized that there's a new flower shooting through the concrete. This beautiful power of nature showing right in front of you that you might have missed if you just turned off your mind when you did that journey again and again. It's again a way of going away from the present moment, from the joy of the present moment. Release yourself from the outcome and you might even get to your outcome faster. And why? Because you'll be able to achieve a state of flow. A state of flow is when you're fully engaged, when you're fully present, because you are fully submerged by the activity. And when you are in this state, you perform better. Why? Because you connect to your subconscious which is where most information is stored. Our reality is a projection of our subconscious mind. So connecting to that subconscious is priceless. But you have to detach yourself from the outcome to be able to experience flow. You won't be able to be fully in the present if you're worrying about the future. It is basically releasing control. I know that I know nothing. I understand I have no control while having all control subconsciously. It's understanding that there is a rhythm to the life we live and that energy flows where intention goes. You can't control your outcome, but you can control where your intention is, where you focus your energy. Is it in a place of fear, in a space of lacking, in worrying about the future? Or is it in the present? Or is it in the gratitude for the things you have in your life right now? It's having goals without allowing them to own us. It's so important to have goals. But we figure out the steps to get to that goal and then we forget the goal. We immerse ourselves fully in walking those steps. There is so much releasing that needs to be done of control as human beings, of the need to control things. Because the control is directly connected to our ego. It's the ego that likes control. So by allowing yourself to be in the present moment, to letting go of control, you release your ego. What is the point of having expectations of certain outcomes, certain experiences, when we have no idea what's going to happen. So this week, let's try to bring ourselves back to the present moment. Let's try to detach ourselves from our outcomes, detach ourselves from our identity, and just be, be present, be here. It makes a big difference. I now feel I am more of a malleable human being, more open to change, more open to growth, more present, less fearful, less anxious because I detach from my outcomes and from my identity. And it's an exercise. It's natural for us to attach to these things. So we have to remember to practice this will be the last episode on detachment for now. I have learned a lot. I hope you have as well. 
The first one was about relationships. Second episode was detachment from thoughts and emotions. And this one about outcomes and identity. I'm sure there's a lot more to cover. But I think I'm ready to explore something else next week. I'd love to hear your thoughts on this episode. So just DM me on Instagram and I can share it with our community. I really enjoy recording these episodes. There's a lot of thoughts in my mind. (laughs) And it's really wonderful to be able to share them with you. So thank you. See you next week. Bye bye. Thank you so much for listening. All the links are written down on the show notes, as well as resources for anyone struggling with their mental health. Don't forget to subscribe so you're notified when we release new episodes. Also, feel free to share our podcast with your friends and family. And if you'd like to get involved, explore our content or support our work, you can become our Patreon by visiting our website www.youarelight.earth. That's Y-O-U-R light.earth. Also, don't forget to follow us on Instagram at u.r.light. Have a wonderful week and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.